It's the morning of the 24th of February. This is one year since Ukraine was invaded by Russia. I'm here at the monument. These are sandbags that they piled up and it's a cry for help from the world for more equipment. The US this morning stood up and promised to provide $2 billion more of military aid. That's what I've been hearing time and time again. They need more military equipment, missiles, fighter jets, ammunition. They're running out of ammunition. They use so much ammunition every day. Uh, without this, the war won't be won. And they need to win the war more quickly. They are, you know, the uh, Ukrainian soldiers are being killed every day. Uh, and their equipment, as I said, is running down, ammunition is running down. So the big ask of all we've heard is supply us with more military equipment so they can win this war and get to peace more quickly. It's very poignant being here today. I'm uh, in the Ukrainian parliament. We've just had the opening session uh, of the parliament and the speaker mentioned all the different MPs from all different countries, the chairs of the foreign affairs committees actually from across Europe are here and they held up flags. Uh, then he um, raised about there was a whole delegation of the United Kingdom and he, and he named me personally and then they sang the Ukrainian national anthem and then there was a minute's silence for the war dead uh, of Ukraine. It's very emotional for me and for everybody there. Um, this is quite an incredible visit we're having. This never been on a parliamentary visit like this before. Um, it's so important for them that we're here and it was very clear from the round of applause they all gave us that it um, means so much to them. We're now uh, in the RADA again. We've had meetings actually with the Ombudsman for Human Rights, absolutely horrific meeting which showed the murder of children and the fact children have been kidnapped, displaced and their actually birth places have been uh, faked. They were born in Ukraine but the Russians have moved them to Russia and said they were born in Russia. Um, and we've also met people who are, uh, look after Crimea and the human rights abuse in Crimea which haven't been happening for a year but have been happening for nine years since the 2014 invasion. We're now about to meet with a number of members of parliament from the Ukrainian parliament here in the RADA, which is the, the Ukrainian parliament, uh, and we're, and we're going to talk to them about individual special interests that UK MPs and Ukrainian MPs have, so military, human rights, displaced persons, civil defence, uh, a whole range of issues uh, that, that we've been pursuing as an APPG and that obviously are of deep interest to the Ukrainian MPs. It's now 8 o'clock on the 24th of February. I've just been at the Vladimir Zelensky press conference. He answered questions for three hours to international journalists. He covered so many topics, need the need for a special tribunal for Putin, the need for more military equipment, particular requests for typhoon jets from the UK, uh, the fact that, that so many people have been killed, the toll on him and his family, the bravery of the Ukrainian people, the need for more support, the need for China to take a stronger position uh, on Ukraine. It was um, a tour de force. Vladimir Zelensky is an incredibly impressive man. Uh, leader of his people and it was an honour really to be able to sit on the front row of the press conference and listen to it um, and you know it's a reflection of the position of the United Kingdom that, that, that two UK MPs and myself and Anne McMorrin, UK Labour MPs were given the opportunity to be here.